very good morning to all of you and a warm welcome to this fourth workshop in our series of NME ICT and IST workshops. Uh, this workshop as you all know is uh, on engineering mechanics and uh, it is the fourth one in our series so far in the second phase. We have uh, already conducted uh, workshops on engineering thermodynamics, database management and uh, green buildings. This is of course, I am talking about the second phase. And uh, we have about uh, 7500 uh, participants across the country. We have remote centers joining us from Jammu to Kanyakumari and Silchar to Surat. So, we have more or less covered the entire country this time. Uh, it is my proud privilege here to welcome you all to this workshop. I would like to now invite uh, Professor Kanan Modgalia, the uh, PI, to please come and grace the stage. I would also like Professor Sovik Banerjee to please join us. Professor Bandar Inamdar could not join us today, so it is only uh, Professor Banerjee at the moment. Professor Inamdar will be joining us a little later on. I now invite Professor Kannan Madgalia to share his thoughts upon this uh, workshop and this entire project. Professor Madgalia. Good morning to all of you. So, I am really delighted to be here and uh, now that we made a change and uh, we are starting at 10 o'clock, hopefully many of you could have joined in your uh, remote centers. Um, I want to uh, take this opportunity to explain this uh, project. Uh, the mission that funds this activity. Uh, this activity is funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT, NME ICT, MHRD, Department of Higher Education, MHRD, Government of India. It started in uh, 2009, uh, launched in February, we got the funding in May. Uh, this mission has three important activities. One is uh, Connectivity, the, the aim of this mission is to provide one, GBB, one GBPS bandwidth to every one of our universities and using that also provide bandwidth to every one of the affiliating colleges. This means the 400 universities that were there at that time in 2009 and about 20,000 colleges that were in existence would get the bandwidth. So, this, uh, uh, this and NKN project are similar activities. Many people confuse the NME ICT's bandwidth provision with that of NKN. These two are two different activities. You can think of this as two collaborative activities, I will explain why. Whereas, NME ICT tries to give bandwidth to every one of the 400 universities and the 20,000 plus affiliating colleges, the NKN tries to provide bandwidth, has provided bandwidth to 1,000 institutions. These need not be colleges, these could be research centers, for example, BARC and so on. Now, of course, a lot of input for the NME ICT's bandwidth provision comes from NKN. Uh, we work uh, uh, in close collaboration. As a matter of fact, some of the uh, infrastructure that has been established by NKN is used for NME ICT also. In fact, we hope that in the near future, uh, NKN will be able to take up NME ICT's um, network as well and run them both. Uh, in fact, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Uh, Mani, who is the senior director, technical director in NKN, um, who uh, is a great friend of NME ICT. Now, just to give an idea of 
what this uh, entailed. Uh, basically, um, the colleges, the universities in the NMEICT network got bandwidth to about 1 percent of the cost at that time. I will not go into the details, but to just to give some numbers, uh, about two, 3 years ago, maybe 4 years ago, some universities got 1 Gbps bandwidth for 10 years at a cost from their side of 55 lakhs. That is about 500 lakhs per year for 1 Gbps bandwidth. Um, so, many universities have benefited and there are some that still have not uh, benefited. So, we would like to invite all of them to join. Uh, the reason why I wanted, wanted to point out the uh, cost uh, was that NME ICT model involves some amount of payment from the uh, colleges and the universities, but it is only nominal. So, this is the uh, this is the connectivity part. Then the second part is um, um, the device. Um, all of you would know about the uh, famous Akash device. Um, it is uh, the world's cheapest, least expensive, but very powerful computing device. And then um, IIT Bombay is glad to be a part of that. Uh, uh, we procured 100,000 tablets, that is 1 lakh tablets at a cost of 2,263 2, rupees a piece. Um, and the pilot, all the 1 lakh tablets have been delivered. We have distributed over 70,000 tablets to a large number of colleges. In fact, to, uh, 250 remote centers um, of our uh, T10 KT project. In fact, um, these have become Akash testing centers. So, the idea is that uh, the students at various colleges will have access to this nice device. Um, so, what next? The government has uh, uh, agreed. Uh, now, in fact, not just the government, even the news media that had a lot of complaints at the very beginning uh, says only good things about the Akash project now. And uh, Akash 4 specifications have been uh, announced already. And then Professor Ashok Junjunwala is the coordinator of those uh, specs committee. Uh, DGSND uh, has already announced that, um, uh, has announced the document and has uh, invited uh, expressions of interest from uh, various people. I believe a large number of vendors have uh, shown interest. Now, uh, what next from our side? IIT Bombay will continue to develop applications uh, for this. Uh, now that the procurement and delivery has been uh, taken away from us, we can concentrate on the thing that we really like namely developing content, e-content, applications and so on and so forth for uh, uh, this device. I am personally looking at developing Akash as a, as a computing device. Uh, in fact, I am particularly interested in the netbook version of Akash. Just imagine uh, what will happen if we can get a full blown Linux um, based Akash with a full keyboard like a netbook, okay? no hanging wires and so on. With a netbook, uh, full blown keyboard, trackpad, um, a dual core or a quad core, um, 1.5 gigahertz um, and all kinds of things available for of the order of let us say about 5000 rupees. Just imagine what this will do to our education, what it will do to our children in the country who do not have access to computers. Uh, most children can then aspire to have a computer of their own and uh, of course, um, you know it may be possible to use them as uh, 
you know, to play Angry Birds and you know, things like that as well. But uh, we will be able to cater to the educational needs of a very large society. Okay? So that is something uh, really exciting. Coming back to this mission, this Akash device is actually a convergence device. Many of the things that we are developing will be uh, delivered through uh, Akash. I uh, will explain that when I go on to, go on to the next uh, uh, focus area of the mission, that is the content generation. So, you know the famous NPTEL, this is uh, funded by NMEICT. Uh, a project of similar magnitude is at IIT Bombay, the talk to attend, uh, talk, uh, it started as talk to a teacher project, now it has become um, uh, a substantial part of it has become a project, a big project T 10 KT or train 10,000 teachers. And that is a project which is, uh, uh, which is going on now. And uh, as a matter of fact, it started as a train 1,000 teacher uh, program. Uh, but because of the success and the popularity of this, uh, it has been uh, now expanded into a 10,000 teacher training program. Um, so, there were several other uh, projects, there are several other projects uh, that are funded by this, uh, by this activity, this uh, contents part of it. I uh, will uh, mention a few. Uh, one of them was to support the live transmission of uh, CDEEP's uh, courses. CDEEP stands for Center for Distance Engineering Education Program. And um, you can think of this as, um, as uh, something uh, quite different from, let us say, NPTEL. NPTEL is a, a studio recorded uh, uh, course, whereas our live transmission at that time at least was seen as a separate activity. And then um, I remember um, the uh, Chairman Board of Governors of TCS uh, of um, College of Engineering Pune. Um, Mr. F. C. Kohli, who is also considered as the father of uh, Indian IT sector, uh, uh, telling me about uh, the benefits of live transmission. Uh, for example, he wanted the CYEP students to get a taste of IIT education. He wanted IIT, his, he wanted his students to get IIT experience. What is IIT experience? He explained. One, if the faculty members make mistakes, he wanted his students to see it. He wanted his students to know that it is okay to make mistakes. He, when the faculty members at IIT uh, crack jokes, he wanted his students to uh, see. He wanted them to know that one does not have to be serious all the time. The same time, he also wanted his students to know that um, Every lecture is delivered and delivered on time. He wanted his students to go and ask his, some of the faculty members that, look, IIT faculty members are delivered, delivering every lecture, why do not you also please deliver? He wanted his faculty members to go and tell his students, um, IIT students are doing so much work, why are you refusing to do the work? So he believed that through the live transmission, you not only get the content, but you get the pedagogy, how a course is taught. So, in fact, I am delighted to note that today's uh, program started on the dot at 10 o'clock. In fact, I want to thank the team for helping start on time. Uh, some of the other projects, we have um, uh, a project called FOSI, Free and Open Source Software in Education. And then uh, through that, we are supporting at IIT Bombay, of course, uh, collaborated by students and uh, faculty members, teachers from all over the country. Um, and uh, so we have, uh, we provide support to uh, Scilab, uh, Python, OpenFoam. OpenFoam is something uh, many of you would be interested in. Uh, this is uh, computational fluid dynamics software for uh, equivalent of uh, fluent. 
and in fact uh, our colleague in mechanical engineering professor shiva uh, has been uh, spearheading heading it we would be delighted to uh, conduct workshops for all your colleges of course not as a part of this program uh, because we have a tight schedule similarly we will do this for uh, scilab uh, the python effort is headed by by my colleague uh, professor prabhu ramachandran we have other activities like oscad for uh, circuit design and uh, open formal for formal verification by professor uh, um, suprati chakravarti sorry uh, there are lots of names and uh, i have to recall some of the names and uh, then we have uh, simpy for simulation um, uh, coin or for optimization once again it is done by our colleagues professor jayendran and uh, professor ashutosh mahajan um, what i plan to do is um, i believe i'll get uh, one slot on 5th of uh, december uh, i think it's a 4 o'clock slot i request all of you to join me at that time i will explain to you hopefully i'll convince you why we should switch over to um, open source software uh, initially there were plans to conduct a scilab workshop as a part of this program but because of time schedule we may skip it but then we would organize it separately uh, to every one of you if you are interested in in every one of your colleges through a team that we have um, called events team of the spoken tutorial uh, activity so i forgot to mention about spoken tutorial uh, through that we are uh, conducting uh, it training uh, all over the country and um, we train close to 1 lakh students every year many colleges have uh, many universities are accepting this as an accepted curriculum for example example the hv university with 77 affiliating colleges has introduced spoken tutorials as a curriculum uh, for two of their programs i will talk more about it um, on thursday 5th of december we have e yantra project at iit bombay uh, headed by professor uh, kavi arya um we have uh, nptel we have uh, nptel i already mentioned nptel is for uh, theory courses a similar activity is being conducted for uh, carried out for uh, laboratory program this is the virtual labs program it is uh, coordinated by professor ranjan bose of iit delhi so these are uh, some of the programs of course um, there could be uh, some uh, well actually there are several programs i am not able to uh, talk about all of those uh, in this short time so so that is that in a nutshell is about nme ict i will take a couple of minutes to talk about uh, this particular course uh, first of all i would like to acknowledge the presence of um, some important people who help uh, achieve this uh first of all i would like to uh, begin with uh, professor uh, savik uh, banerji who is the um, uh, instructor for this course uh, he and uh, professor mandar inandar uh, have kindly agreed to uh, deliver these lectures of course you will see uh, more of them in the rest of this uh, course uh, and then i would like to acknowledge the presence of professor gaitonde who is a great friend to our project in fact um, Uh, people call him as the god of thermodynamics and uh, he has conducted uh, several programs in fact thanks to him uh, this activity has become very popular in uh, mechanical engineering so i would like to place our thanks and then i would like to acknowledge um, uh, some of the managers who help uh, achieve this before i we go to that i will explain to you i would want to point out why it is important why the administration of this course is extremely important some people tend to think that it is only the lecturing that forms the center piece of this and i as a faculty member was delivered many courses through this uh, back to differ um, it's like this supposing you write a small paper of 5 pages so there is some amount of activity administrative activity that we involve ourselves in just imagine putting together 200 such booklets as a complete book let's say 1000 page book 
with a coordination of all the participants, all the creators, everyone understanding, everyone speaking the same language. For example, you have to use the same symbol, you have to use the same language and so on and so forth. Just imagine how much work that is. Okay? So, it is I would say several orders of magnitude. In a similar way, this course okay, where we have 10,000 teacher, 10, teachers, of course, it is a nomenclature. There are some courses in which we had had some uh, 12,000 participants, 15,000 participants, some other uh, programs we had 7,000, 7,500 and so on. Um, uh, but I believe that uh, with time, this will become uh, uh, you know, very popular for every subject will cross 10,000 mark. In any case, some of these are niche subjects. For example, uh, engineering mechanics, uh, although it is uh, uh, quite important, I believe in popularity, uh, it is not so popular as uh, Android. I mean, uh, you know, there is no denying of that. After all, uh, you know, supposing I compare my digital control book with Harry Potter, can there be any comparison? So, uh, even though some of these are a little more specialized courses, uh, I believe that even these will reach more than 10,000. So, this team has to work with uh, coordinators, faculty members, uh, funding, camera team, uh, Moodle team, registration process, all kinds of things. Uh, in contrast, uh, for the faculty members, um, it is a lot easier. Uh, of course, they have to do a lot of work. Uh, for one thing, they cannot make mistakes, right? because it is going to be seen by 10,000 people. There has to be meticulous planning and so on. But nevertheless, I would say that administrative work is several times that. So, I will, so I wanted to make a pitch for this, because some people think that it is after all administrative work. So, I wanted to put that on record. So, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Mukta Atre, who is the uh, coordinator of this. Um, I think, um, well, let me just put it, uh, I think she is a senior project manager. I do not know the exact designation, but she coordinates this activity. Well, sitting next to her is um, Sajjan, who handles all of our uh, uh, recording and he is also uh, an IT specialist. And if our IT team uh, does not respond to him, does not reply to his email, he will uh, roll down his sleeves and actually develop the whole thing. He is capable of doing that. And then he has done streaming, he has done all kinds of things. I would like to um, um, also introduce our uh, uh, finance and accounts uh, uh, minister, as uh, Professor Fatek says, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Jaya Gaitonde. And then I would like to uh, introduce um, uh, Rajesh, uh, who uh, is the uh, hardware person for uh, Akash. Some of you might have seen him in the Akash course. Uh, I would like to introduce Mahindra, who is sitting just behind uh, Rajesh. Okay, I am not sure whether I will uh, remember all the faces. There are lots of people, as you can see, there are, uh, I think if I am not mistaken, at least 150 people who work in Professor Fatek's project. So, that reminds me I have talked a lot. Uh, Professor Fatek will uh, talk next and I am pretty sure that he will talk about MOOCs and uh, so as a result, I will not say anything about it. Um, so, I wish you all the best. It is a great opportunity. I want all the participants to um, take, make use of this opportunity, this golden opportunity and participate. Uh, more than anything else, please do ask questions and challenge our instructors and do that live and also through Moodle and then do share your exam papers, do share your assignments and so on. Uh, thanks for joining, goodbye and Jai Hind. Thank you, Professor Madhgalya. Uh, our co-PI, Professor Fata could not join us today, but uh, he did not uh, want to lose this opportunity of talking to you all. So, he has very kindly uh, recorded a few words for all of us and I uh, will now play that. Greetings from IIT Bombay. I must apologize for not being physically present to interact with you, but I am happy that the recording technology permits me to share some of my thoughts with you.
first and foremost let us talk about the clicker application which all of you are going to test we have long ago realized that the clicker application could be very useful for the teachers to get immediate feedback from their students many teachers in iit bombay have already been using this to conduct even two three quizzes every day in their class what we would like is to see teachers from all the 300 colleges which are akash project centers to be doing exactly the same thing for this reason our team has prepared a version of the application which can be run locally what it means is you don't require any internet connection you don't require to be connected to the central moodle or central database you can set up everything in your own college and run the clicker application for any class you will recall that we had suggested that every college should try and teach at least one course using Akash tablets. You may try this out in this semester and you may therefore use the clicker application in your own classes. Please note that the infrastructure in the classroom that you should provide should be checked very thoroughly, particularly for the Wi-Fi connectivity and also the students participating in the class should be told to charge their batteries of Akash tablets well before they come to the class. We all understand that the battery does not last very long. Incidentally, this is something which will be corrected in the future versions of Akash. You must have read the news that with the success of the Akash project and thanks to help and assistance from all of you, the government has decided to go ahead with the next versions of Akash tablet. The specs for the next version have already been frozen. DGSND will be floating a tender to possibly get 50 lakh or 1 crore tablets in near future for further expansion. I would also like to touch upon one point where many of the teachers who are assembled here would be concerned with. I have received some mails recently and this relates to the Akash Research Fellowship Award contest which I had announced for the participants of our Akash orientation program. I will frankly share with you some of my problems. Till March or April, it was not very clear whether we will be receiving all the one lakh tablets that we had ordered. And therefore, it was necessary for me to preserve the funding available to make alternate arrangements if necessary. However, thanks to DataVen, they supplied all the one lakh tablets and we have distributed them to all the centers. This happened in the month of April and May. Subsequently, there was a long gap of summer vacation and thereafter, there was some delay on my part. I would like to assure all participating teachers that the Akash Research Fellowship Award contest is very much on. However, I would like to mention that our perusal and evaluation of the submissions indicates that many submissions are not up to the mark. Instead of depending upon the evaluation done at a central place, I have therefore decided to fall back to the peer evaluation system, which I had in fact briefly suggested in the original contest. Accordingly, these submissions will now be evaluated at each remote centers by the peer groups formed by the team leaders of all the submitters. Within about a week's time, I will be informing you the details of this peer evaluation process. We hope to complete this process within one month and announce the awards by end of September. I am also going to conduct a meeting through a view of all remote center coordinators as also all Akash coordinators. Tentatively, we have frozen the uh, uh, dates to be 31st of August for remote center coordinators and 7th of September for Akash coordinators. These are Saturdays. These will be short meetings for about three hours and they will be conducted through AVU. That means you don't have to travel anywhere, but you have to be present and participate. Again, I will be issuing the notification very shortly. I do not want to take more time. It is important that you understand all the details and nitty-gritties of how the setup has to be done 
and how the quizzes are to be conducted using Akash tablets in your own classrooms by your own teachers. Uh, my team has worked well, but as you know, in all such applications, there is always a possibility of further improvement, both in functionality and in effectiveness. Please do use the tablets for this purpose. The people who have used it here, my own colleagues, have given valuable feedback using which we have been able to make several improvements. I am sure that with your further inputs, we will continue to enhance the effectiveness of this application. Thank you very much. All the best. So that brings us to an end of the inaugural session.